Welcome back to episode 4 of this beginner C++ series. Hope you're all learning a lot. It's probably going to take a while for these videos to actually get views, so I'm not I'm not sweating that most of them only have two views. Okay, um, we're going to talk about while. We're going to get rid of all this, I think. You know, we'll leave these comparison operator comments here, but basically we're going to talk about um, in this episode, uh, episode four, while, do while, and for loops. Because these are all sort of similar and sort of serve a very similar purpose. And we're going to talk about things like, uh, okay, let's just get into it. So let me, let me think of a little scenario where I could show you these. Okay. A while loop looks like this. A do while loop looks like this. A for loop looks like this. Hold on, wait for it. It's a spider. You see the spider? Check that out. <laughs> okay, so I will explain all these. A while loop is sort of in the same way that uh, what we talked about last episode where it checks in these parentheses before going into the block. It does that too. A while loop will check some sort of thing here and see if it returns two. If it returns true, it loops. And as long as the thing in these parentheses is true, it keeps looping. So if you just put a number in here, it'll always be true and this will loop indefinitely. So just this right here will never finish running because it will be stuck in this loop forever. Let me show you main. I'll go ahead and compile it. And uh, Oh, I didn't save. There we go. Oh, it wants an expression before this do while. And there's nothing there. Let's comment this out for the moment. It's coming out this too, and it might throw some weird error since it's not filled out either. Let's just look at this while loop, and I'm talking about this infinite thing. So we'll go ahead and run what we compiled, and we'll just sit here forever. Nothing will ever happen. It'll just, it's actually in this loop and just running it indefinitely because 12 is not zero, so it's always true. Okay, so the point of this is you usually have what's called a guard. So you might have something like a, uh, a Boolean called, uh, I don't know, is running. You see this very commonly in games. So every video game you've ever played has a while loop called the game loop, and it is basically one of these that runs until you quit. So it'll have a flag that says something like is running or quit, isn't, hadn't quit, something like that. So as long as this is true, it'll run. And within the loop you have all the stuff your game does so it's something like that but you want to have some scenario in here where is running turns to false and the game exits or the game quits so that didn't last very long what we can do here is have a little fun and create a little logic scenario so you do have to declare the variable that you're going to check before the while loop somewhere, it has to know about it. While that may, might seem obvious, it might not always be that obvious when you're new. So say we have an integer called uh, uh, number of loops, and we set that to 10. And maybe in here we have a C out, and we say times ran, and then we'll spit out a times ran variable, which we have to create somewhere. We'll do it up here. Or I can do I can show you a little something called a static variable. Static times well it needs to be an integer or something. Static int times ran. Now I will explain statics to you because I've never talked about them in this series before. There's kind of a lot to them, but I'll I'll show you or we'll talk about just kind of the main stuff. We'll start it out at zero. Actually, we'll start it out at one. So when the first time it runs, it'll say times ran one. Okay, so a static, as you can see, it's in this block. And as this loops again, 
it re-enters the scope. So normally, if I had if I had it just like this, it would recreate this variable and redeclare it with a one. But if it's static, that means it sticks basically, and it doesn't recreate. It doesn't destroy and recreate. So this will create the very first time it runs, but after that, it's just going to stay there. And this will allow us to declare it with in this loop and, and not have it redeclare, but this will stick with the same variable. So it basically prevents it from being created a bunch of times and lets us keep the same one. Now the other option is we could just do this up here so it's not within a loop and starting a new loop and potentially redeclaring it. It only declares once in the main. But if it's not used anywhere else in the program, only in this loop, it's often a good idea to encapsulate its usage where it actually is. So hence why it might be a good idea to do it here. Uh, I'm going to call this to run. And I'm going to make this const. Say we don't ever want to change it. So a constant variable is no longer a variable because it doesn't vary. It's constant. So that way we can't change this. Any attempt to change this will result in a compiler error or a crash. Um, the point of that is just to keep your programming consistent so you can't crash things on your own. Okay, so as this runs, as long as it's running, we're going to say times ran. So if you look at this how it is right now, it should just run one time and it's going to set is running to false times ran one. But if we put a guard on this is running, another guard, say first of all, we're going to increment times ran after it runs once. So this plus plus just increments it. There's also a minus minus which can decrement it. We're going to do a plus plus. So after it spits this out, it's going to say times ran goes up one. So we're going to split this up. This is kind of the end of the end of the while loop update of the state. And we'll say if times ran is greater than number of loops to run, then we'll set this to false. Please syntax there. There we go. So now this will run until it's uh, it's greater than this. Now another thing we could do is I think we could put the plus plus right here, oddly enough, and it being in front is it's going to increment it before the check. If I put it after, it would increment after the check. So that's just another weird little syntax thing you can do. And let's check it out. We should get up to 10. Oops, let me compile first. And, yep, there we go. So I haven't really talked about this increment thing. Um, but, yeah, if, it's, if, the, if your increment thing's in front, it does it before going forward with the operation. If I do it over here, it'll do the check thing first, and it might, I think it'll actually get to 11 if I do it this way. Let's, let's find out. OMG. Yeah. So that's the difference between these. This one does it after. So if I only wanted to go to 10, I would do it like that. But that's a little weird to read if you're new. It might be just easier to do the way I had it before, or I just had it on its own line, but ultimately it doesn't matter. Sometimes it's nice to save space. This to me makes perfect sense. All right, so that's a while loop and it has a guard of is running, has a little check to see if it should exit or not. Um, it's also worth noting that it'll just never enter the loop if this is false. There, didn't enter the loop, it just skipped on past it. So. There can be scenarios where you want it to go into the loop at least once, no matter what. And that's the point of the do while loop, which you could also use as a game loop. And I will talk briefly about that. So let's let's comment out that while loop. And let's go into this do while loop and I'll talk a little bit about how that works. So no matter what, it goes into this once. Let's let's grab this. We'll use the same sort of stuff. Uncomment there. And uh, yeah, we'll make our times ran. We'll say times ran again. And then we can increment it. Except the is running 
is now set. Oh, it is now checked at the end, and once it executes once, it essentially functions like a while loop. It's just that first one that matters. So even if is running is false, it's still going to run once. Check this out. Yep, still ran once even though is running is false. So that's the point of that. And we could say in here just to uh, even so it could even start as false. Okay. Then. So if I put a bracket here, I don't know what the autocomplete thing is, but it keeps throwing me off there. So if it doesn't set it to false, we could say it sets it to true just to make sure it's still running in case it started out as false. And in this case, we would get to our 10 loops. So that's how do while works and the difference there. Now let's talk about for loops. Sort of another form of while loops. You can actually make this infinite or go work very similar to a while loop if you want, but generally how people use this, see the little spider claws in the eyes, uh, or the fangs, I love it. Okay, usually in the first one, you either declare or set a variable, and it stays within this scope. The very, what you see the most office, often, <laughs> office, often is, is int i equals zero. That's usually how people do this. I mean, you start out with the integer of i, it's, and it's zero. And the second one is the guard. It's the same as this condition right here, basically. And usually, people have the limit of their loop, like until until i is or while i is less than um, number of loops to run. We'll use that again. So it'll be 10, but we could go change it at any point to whatever we want. We'll do 20 just for fun, and over here is the update after every run. So this standard here is I plus plus. So it increments. And then we could put the, let's see, I guess all we really need in this case is this C out. And if we run this, well, times ran is no longer being used here. So instead we're using I. So we'll put an i there. An i is going to start out as 0, so it's going to say 0 to start. Um, we could put it, change it to a 1 here to make it properly say 1, because times ran 0 is not actually correct. It's, it's going to be 1. So there we go. 1 to 19. And since this is less than, if we make it less than or equal to, it'll go to 20. Now, some people do things like, uh, I don't know, say you definitely want it to start at zero. And, oh, I'll just leave that. And you want it to say the right number, so you might say a plus one here every time. And that way you still get an accurate readout. Oh, let me uh, compile. Okay, press up a bunch of times. There we go. And there we go. We get a more accurate readout. Okay, well, that's those loops. And if you have any questions, leave them below. Don't forget to leave a like. Subscribe to the channel if you'd like to learn more about C++ and see more random tutorials from me. And uh, keep it real. Keep coding. Remember, I believe. See you in the next episode.